And welcome back to another episode of Locked on Chiefs. This is actually Crossover Thursday, and this is Tony Wiggins of Locked on Jaguars. So this is going to be a fun episode. We have a lot to talk about in this episode. Today's episode is Crossover Thursday. It is presented by our friends at Price Picks. Price Picks is so much fun, and it's easy to play. No competing with other players. Just you versus the projections available. Pick two to five players, and if they score more or less than their Price Picks projection, you can win up to ten times your money on your entry it can literally take less than 60 seconds to enter it's that easy we love price picks and we know you will too first time users can use can receive up to 100 percent instant deposit match up to 100 dollars with promo code locked on that's pricepicks.com promo code locked on all right tony there's a lot to talk about when we start getting into this matchup uh thank you for making locked on chiefs your first listen go check out locked on jaguars as well make it your first Second listen uh, for all of your Jaguar, for all of the Chiefs fans out there, and for the Jaguar fans, come listen to Locked On Chiefs. A lot of information to be going into this game, and it's a little bit different than I expected it would be at the start of the season. It is. Um, there's some, there's some improvement, and teams find out when they play Jacksonville. Oakland found out last week that you know they thought it was just a two and six team that was. And Oakland should have known better. Oh, Las Vegas, they should have known better because. Yep. They had lost a bunch of close games. Well, the Jaguars, all of their six losses were by uh, one score or, or you know, less. Like between uh, – they got one where they could have won the game. They got to the one-foot line, and, and the time ran out. So all of the games have been super competitive, even against really good teams. And then they had a couple of blowout wins against the Colts before things went crazy for them. And they went on the road to beat the Chargers by 28. So there's this thing so far – Trevor Lawrence has actually played well against all those quarterbacks that everyone compares him to. That's Joe Burrow. Uh, they took it took a walk-off field goal last year in a head-to-head matchup on Thursday night. He beat Justin Herbert. He beat Josh Allen last year. And now we're going to see what he does with Patrick Mahomes, man, because they keep comparing him to those guys saying that he has that sort of ability. So far, he's 2-1, and one, and uh, we'll see what happens this week. Yeah, no offense, but hoping it ends up being two and two. Uh, <laughs> lot, lot, lot to talk about, though, when we start talking about matchups in this game, and we will get to that here in a little bit in some further segments. Uh, but I'll let you go ahead and start off. What is your story of the week for the Jacksonville Jaguars? The biggest story is we had had a blueprint of how they have to play and the games that they won, the two games prior to last week. It was get ahead of the sticks, um, score, get a lead, and then allow your defense to do some mixing and matching and make the game predictable uh, for the other offense. Therefore, your defense had sort of a blueprint as to how they had to play and how they had to win, and and that's what they did. Um, The games where they didn't play well uh, so well is when they didn't control the clock. They didn't have a real good run-pass balance, and it was almost like they were throwing things against the wall, and there was no identity, and they would lose those games usually because of a mistake, like, trying to figure stuff out and doing something too cute and not really running the football. And then if you look at their, if you look at the team stats, their time of possession was in one game, they had 27, both teams had 27 first downs, but the other team had the ball nine minutes more than Jacksonville. That's ridiculous. So for a two and 16, for a two and 16 to actually have a plus at one point, it was a plus 24 differential in points and they were two and six. It, it It's like, what on earth is going on? So last week when they got down 17 to nothing, I sat there and said, "This they're about to get blown out. They came back on a 27 to three run and stifled Las Vegas. And it shocked me because it is the absolute blueprint that I did not expect them to be able to overcome. And it's exactly what they did. So I think they learned something about themselves in terms of it's a young team with 30 some odd guys under the age of 25 a rookie coach who's trying to get a bunch of guys who's never won anything to figure it out. To win that game last week, there is nothing better than demonstrated performance, and there's nothing better than lessons actually learned but to give you the confidence moving forward that you can do what you set out to do if you execute and and take the practice field and transition that to the game on Sunday. Yeah, and I think that it's really fascinating. You're absolutely right to have so many close games uh, and so many losses that are by one score or less. And, and to be up in your point differential uh, in that regard, I think that's fascinating. You know, when I look at Kansas City, to me, the week this week, the big story for them is that they survived Tennessee. And I know that seems kind of foolish at times, 
But the reality is Tennessee somehow has always played Kansas City very tough. And if they haven't beat Kansas City, it's been a very tough game for them for the most part. Uh, playoff game a couple of years ago is a little bit different. But in the regular season, it seems like Kansas City has always had trouble with Tennessee over the past couple of years since Mahomes has been here. And you look at what they did in that game, it looked like Kansas City had no business even being in that game at the end of the game. I mean, they were moving the ball. They were they were doing what you would want them to do. They just couldn't put any points on the board, and they could not get past what they were allowing Jackson, or sorry, not Jacksonville, Tennessee to do. And really, Kansas City was kind of beating themselves in some regards because the only way the Titans scored in the first half was two huge Henry runs. So really, when I look at this team and I look at what they're going to be doing going forward, it's going to be a question of can they continue to try to get better can they get better on offense? Can they get more people involved? Because that's the big question right now is you have Travis Kelsey, who was covered up by Tennessee pretty well last week. Uh, Juju Smith-Schuster had a good game for Kansas City last week. But then you have a lot of other question marks. You know, is MBS going to step up? Can he do something? I know McCole Hardman's been scoring touchdowns, but can he do something more than just score touchdowns? Uh, can he get involved and get some yardage and help them that way as well? Uh, and then you have, you know, the new addition of Kadarius Tony. I think that that's going to be fascinating to watch as we go through the second half of this season. And the other thing that I think that really stands out to me that's a little bit of a mini story for the Chiefs is I did think that they were going to be at a point where they could be, you know, five and three, six and two at this part in the season. Mm -hmm. I did not expect that the second half of their season would be as easy as it looks like it is right now. If you look at the strength of schedule, it looks like they should be able to run the table on most of the rest of the games. I'm not saying they're going to. Right. I'm just saying it looks like the rest of their strength of schedule is going to be a lot simpler because you never thought that – I never thought that the Rams were going to be a under 500 team. Just never right. expected that. So that's going to be something to watch going forward. Yeah, and in the NFL, we learn lessons all the time. And One thing I told my listeners over the years is – don't look at that schedule and count those wins and losses because in the NFL, these are guys that get checks and anything yep. in any given week can happen. I know um, I saw when they had 63 pass attempts because I didn't actually see the game last week, but they had 63 passing attempts and only had 20 points. I know that's not the way that they want to play, but the thing about them is they remind me of the Golden State Warriors. I don't care how poorly they played all game. If they're <laughs> down by 13, they'll start bombing threes. And at some point, you know, it doesn't matter what happened in the first 48 minutes of the game because the last 12 minutes, they'll hit you with 24 points. And it's like, damn, man, we outplayed them the whole game. And all of a sudden, boom, they got something, something going. So I know coming up with our matchups and we're going to talk about some of the key matchups in the game. It is going to be paramount that Jacksonville and I'll tell you this, Jacksonville has to use that back line as their 12th defender because I know Kansas City is going to go up and down the field. And the Jacksonville Jaguars have to have really, really good red zone defense. So I'm going to talk about that and why I think they might have a little bit of success uh, in segment two. There's going to be a ton to talk about in segment two. We're going to be getting into the matchups here in just a moment. But today's episode is brought to you by Blue Nile. At BlueNile.com, you can celebrate all of life's moments, all of life's special moments, from creating the custom engagement ring of her dreams to gifting a classic and timeless jewelry piece, all at the prices you won't find it a traditional jeweler. Whether you're ready to pop the question or you're celebrating a milestone moment, find jewelry as unique as her with the modern convenience of online shopping at BlueNile.com. Build the engagement ring of your dreams or celebrate life's special moments with fine jewelry. No matter what you're looking for, Blue Nile has jewelry experts on hand 24-7. Make your moment sparkle with jewelry from BlueNile.com and locked on. Chiefs and Locked on Jaguars listeners get $50 off purchases of $500 or more. This podcast exclusive includes engagement rings. Use code Locked On. That's code Locked On. Plus, every order is insured, ships free, and it arrives in discreet packaging that won't give away what's inside. Shop stress-free and find your forever peace. Go to BlueNile.com today. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into this. There's a lot to talk about when we start talking about matchups. I want to throw one out there really quick. It isn't really a key matchup to me near as much as it's going to be fun to watch. And it's Doug Peterson versus Andy Reid. I, I understand it's not really a specific matchup because those coaches aren't going to be coaching against each other specifically. But just having Peterson going against Reid, I think that's going to be fun to watch. It is going to be fun to watch. It's 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 like I used to watch those Chinese movies or, or the karate movies. And 
Andy Reid's the dude with the long gray beard and the, the sensei, the quiet <laughs> dude, you know, and the other guy's the young whippersnapper who learned everything from him. You know what I'm saying? And yep. um, the, the, the Jaguars would, would, would hope that at some point in the, in the future that they, the program here is Andy Reid like, and I tell people this all the time and I'm not a huge Trent Baalke fan as our GM. I really like Mike Bradway who is the sister GM up in with the chiefs. But when you look at their rosters, when you look at the, how many people from Brett Veach all the way down to Andy Reed, there's like 37 dudes with titles, man. And in Jacksonville, there aren't that many, you know, you got, you got Trent Balky and like two or three guys, and then you got Doug Peterson. So I think Doug Peterson will mirror Andy Reed in terms of play calling and aggressiveness. One thing they both have in common is this, their games will go on for four hours because they will throw the ball all around the field and game management and time management. We had a game, we had a game this year that started at one and it ended at 437. And yep. it was like, what are you doing? And I was like, I was thinking that's Andy. Andy Reid does the same thing. It's like, it's okay when they win, but when they lose, you sit back and watch. You say they threw the ball too much. So it is going to be fun. I think the other one could probably tell their defensive coaches exactly what's coming. Oh, he's about to do this or he's about to do that. Because you want to talk about that. We play uh, Indy twice this year already. And Frank Reich, everybody talks about Frank Reich knows Doug P. No one knows. No two coaches know each other more, I believe, than Andy Reid and Doug P. They were together for a long, long time. Yep, I agree. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun to see how those two go at each other and how their offenses are, are going at, against the other defenses. I tell you, for me, one thing to watch, uh, my brother, is um, the – the Bucks, the Bucks held the Chiefs to nine points in the Super Bowl, I believe. Mm -hmm. Mike Caldwell was the linebackers coach. And I know a lot of times we attribute a coach's last stop, like he came from Tampa, and like he's going to do everything that Todd Bowles did. We kind of just did that with Andy Reid and, and, and Doug Peterson. It may, yep. may not always be true, and, and it's not necessarily apples to apples because you don't have the same personnel. And then Todd Bowles was actually the defensive coordinator. But – if he needs some confidence, well, Mike Caldwell can say, you know what? I was a part of staff that stopped that thing. I know what to do and what not to do. And he can tell his players that, look, dude, I was the linebackers coach and we did this, this, and this, and this, and this. And we were able to shut that thing down. It works. So maybe look back last week at the Titans game. Look back at that Tampa game when he was on that staff and he can point to it and say, it's possible. I know he's great, but they put their pants on the same way you did. It's almost the same. It's almost the same thing. They probably told him when they went out to play the Chargers early in the year when the Chargers was hot as fish grease and they went out and smoked them 38 to 10. Look, it is not impossible. You know, you can actually overcome, you know, playing in that stadium, which is one of the hardest venues in sports to win in and playing against that guy and that coach. We love them. But guess what? We ain't going to love on them too much because you got a job to do. So. I do think those are some things to watch uh, from that perspective. Now, I also believe Doug Peterson needs to throw the whole kitchen sink and just go for it every time on fourth and short. I don't care what, as long as he ain't on his side of the field. Uh, I think they need, <laughs> I think they need touchdowns instead of field goals. All yep. of those things that he was criticized for early in the year for doing. I actually think this game, he actually needs to do it and try to get out to a lead and then come back with the efficiency that they had last week against the Raiders. But I think this game, he needs to be super, super aggressive, go for it, trust his teammates and tell them y'all are young, but you know what, you know what kids do? Kids get on roller coasters that scare the hell out of grown people. You know why? Because they, they ain't old enough to be afraid. And I think that's the kind of youth that he needs to take, take advantage of this week with these guys. And I'll be fascinated to see if that actually happens because a couple of years ago, and maybe this is last year, I'm not sure. Yeah, it had to have been last year. I watched the Chargers go for it repeatedly against Kansas City and falter and fall short, and it cost them the game. So I'm not disagreeing with you. I think that Jacksonville has to be aggressive. The big difference between the Chargers and Jacksonville is the Chargers have a very good team. I'm not saying Jacksonville can't be very good, but unless they're playing up to the same level that's – uh, they have it at different times this season. That's going to be harder to sustain. So that'll be something interesting to watch. When I look at this game, though, I think the big thing that I have to figure out and the, that the Chiefs have to figure out is how are they going to continue to stop the run? 
you know, you watch what Derrick Henry did to them the first half last week. They shut him down in the second half. But part of that was Tennessee trying to throw the ball a little bit. Uh, but they did shut the running game down to a point. Etienne is on a tear right now. Yes. That's that's a guy that if he gets going, that's going to make this game a lot more difficult for Kansas City because then they become a two-headed attack. They can pass the ball with some efficiency. I'm not going to say it's going to be great, but that's another thing that I'll be interested to see is this is going to be a better test than it was last week for a guy like Marcus McDuffie. Or not Marcus. I'm sorry, Trent McDuffie. Trent I McDuffie. keep saying Marcus. Um, Trent McDuffie coming back last week, he didn't allow another catch. He didn't allow catch. He wasn't thrown out very much. I expect that to change this week, but how does he adapt to this team and to play in the role he's going to have to play in the, on this team? It's going to be big because Christian Kirk, everyone talked about his contract. Well, guess what? He's been worth the money. Christian Kirk has, you know, he's had a couple of games where he didn't get a lot of looks. But when Trevor has had time and called his name, Christian Kirk has caught everything in sight. So it'll be interesting to see what that rookie does against a guy who's a professional pass catcher who's been in the league for a while. Flipping it, we have us a young rookie also uh, from Utah, Devin Lloyd, at 6'3 and 239 pounds who can run like the wind. And one of the things that when he came out of college, they said he covers like a safety and he's a big linebacker. Um, Devin Lloyd, you're going to have to do something with Travis Kelsey. You're not going <laughs> to – and I know it's hard, but guess what? This is why you were picked in the in the first round, and this is why they gave up uh, a third-round pick along with a second-round pick for you. This is what the job is. So you don't have to stop him all day, but you just got to – they're going to help you a little bit, but you got to – he has to make sure that he can get out there and handle his business. We're going to get to a score prediction. I might shock some people in segment uh, number three with, with that prediction. I got to let you know, though, that thanks for making Locked On Jaguars and Chiefs your first listen today. For your second listen today, check out Locked On Sports today from the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports. Go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with the local experts and insights only Locked On can provide. Locked On Sports today is available on this app, YouTube, wherever you get your podcast today's episode is brought to you by betonline.net and it is your number one source for sports betting info stats news and analysis get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there from football to basketball to soccer esports we've got it all at betonline.net interesting thing happened in the nba today with the brooklyn nets they didn't hire who you thought they were going to hire. They hired Josh Vaughn. So Jacques Vaughn. So we got to find out how that impacts Kevin Durant and the situation with Kyrie Irving and how that's all going to blow over. Check them out at Bet Online. You'll get that information. And if you love sports podcasts, you can find those at Bet Online as well. We're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more because Bet Online is where the game starts. Here's where it gets fun, isn't it? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Absolutely gets fun uh, at this point. You want me to go first? Because I, you know, I know everybody's going to laugh at me. Yeah, shock us. Let's do it. 28-27 Jaguars. I think they're going to win because they're going for touchdowns. They are a much better team than – people can imagine at three and six. They are really, really, I'm telling you, they, they've they been in every single game this year. That means games at Philly. They they had the ball with a chance to tie the game at the end of the game in a game where Trevor Lawrence threw a pick and had four fumbles. He had five turnovers. And the, Jack, the Jacksonville Jaguars actually had the ball with a chance to tie around midfield. If they can just cut down some of the mistakes, make sure they don't get beyond the armpits, of Patrick Mahomes and give him alleys to run. First of all, the play never ends with him. Even if he goes backwards, he's going to – you'll think – I can't wait for somebody to make a meme that looks like he's figure skating. I'm telling you because he is twirling <laughs> and moving all around, and the play is never over because you think he's going to throw it away, and he'll whip that thing out like an underhand pitch, and it'll go 40 yards down the field and hit somebody right in the chest. Don't get caught up in all of that magic. It's just one play, you know? It's it's one play. If he does that, 
do not let these plays start piling up because now you're going to be in awe. You have to go in and say, that's just one time because he's going to do stuff like that. And we know it. And we know Travis Kelsey's going to catch a touchdown over the middle and he's going to dance in the end zone. We know all of that. We know Chris Jones is going to blow by some offensive lineman. We know all of that too. You can overcome those negative plays if you're Jacksonville, but you have to be really, really aggressive. They won't win with field goals. That's why I have them scoring four touchdowns and pulling out an upset win against your Kansas City Chiefs. Fair enough. I, you know, I get why you're saying what you're saying. And here's my issue with this game. And it's my issue really with any game that Kansas City plays where it's a team that looks like their record is probably not what it should be. Uh, and it's, are they going to play down to the record? Because mm-hmm. I think that's what they did against the Colts. Uh, and I don't think the Colts are a good team. So don't let me get that clear. But they play down to teams at times, and they play down to – if they're playing down to a record, they're looking at this team and they're saying, okay, well, next week we have a a big game that we got to get ready for against the Chargers. So, you know, maybe they are overlooking this game. That is going to be a big problem. So I'm not shocked that you said that they could possibly lose this game. With that said, I can't pick Kansas City to lose this game because I think they are the better team. The question that that still remains that we're still trying to figure out as this season continues is, are they going to be able to get it figured out with players past Juju and Travis Kelsey on offense? Yeah. If you start getting guys like MBS involved uh, on a regular basis and you get guys like Michael Hardman involved on a regular basis or Sky Moore or Kadarius Tony or whoever involved on a regular basis, you're going to be in a great scenario to win every game because you can only guard so many people and I am going to be fascinated to watch Devin Lewin on Travis Kelsey. I think that that could be a fascinating matchup as well. Uh, I have to go with this game, and I'm looking at it the way they played last week, and I think that Kansas City is going to be pissed off. I don't think that they're going to be overlooking Jacksonville because I, I guarantee you Andy Reid is going to want this game because it's against Doug Peterson. So you know that that's probably going to be a little bit more of something that is going to be in his uh, mind. And I'm going to go 35-24 Kansas City. If that happens, that'll be the first game the Jaguars lose uh, beyond the one-score threshold. So uh, it's going to be fun to watch. So just to wrap it up, we talked about the storylines of Andy Reid and Doug Peterson, and I know you'll see pregame where they'll hug, and you'll see postgame where they're going to talk about that all game. They're going to talk about Mm -hmm. that all game on the broadcast, and we know that. But you're right, Travis Etienne, Trevor Lawrence, those guys uh, have to continue, those young guys have to continue with their balance and be able to try to run the ball. I didn't realize Kansas City wasn't uh, performing real well against the run. And ETN has broken off a couple of long runs every single game to see if he can take it to the house. I am watching that McDuffie matchup on the corner. And, of course, Trevor Lawrence had the best game he had in his entire career last week when he was 25 out of 31. I expect him to have some similar success this week, once again, because he's playing against one of those guys that everyone measures him Um Again, so my score is a one point victory. Your score is what? Uh, nine two, points. A nine no, point. No, Eleven points. Sorry. Eleven point win. We'll just have to see how it goes, man. But this is always fun to do the crossover uh, with you guys. I'm reminding you also one more time that making your second listen, the locked on sports today from the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports. Go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts. And insights only Locked On can provide, and it is Locked On Sports Today is available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcast. It's been real, man. I always tell my folks, take care of each other. Of course, in Jacksonville, that has a different meaning right now because when this airs, they will be dealing with a tropical storm, and my family's back there. I, just for housekeeping purposes, I'm in Mexico. I got stuck because my plane, uh, <laughs> my plane got my flight got canceled. Uh, because of the hurricane and the storm and and I flew out of Orlando. So uh, kudos to everyone at home fighting uh, that storm and hopefully everything goes okay for you guys. And all you Chiefs fans, thank you for joining us here on the Locked On Chiefs and Locked On Jaguars podcast. Take care of each other until next time.